Hey kids, welcome to lesson 15, Processing Arrays. Generalizing search by making it into a function. You've just written code to search for a value in a list. Congratulations, by the way. If we could generalize this behavior, it might be useful to us in the future. And I assume it will be. It's probably something that we want to do over and over again. And I bet you, we will. Over the next few levels, We'll build up a very useful general function for searching for any value in any list, but we'll do it one step at a time. In code.org, I really appreciate that. We have a do this. Note, we provided new starter code that implements the pseudocode from the last exercise. It also creates two more arrays that we'll be using later for testing. For this level, we'll just worry about test array. Run the starter code to verify that it works correctly. Create a new function, name that function search. Move the code that checks for five inside the function. Note, you must move the Boolean variable inside the function as well, or it won't reset each time you call the function. Call the function and make sure the code still works. The actual behavior will be the same as you ran it before. The difference now is you're calling a function to do it. Looks like we have steps here on what to do. Looks like it's creating a new function, search, and they're putting all this code that we created before into there, including the variable, and then calling that function. Well, that doesn't sound too bad for us. Let's go ahead and look at the code. We have two more variables here, like they said, non-fives and one-five. We have our test array from before. We have our loop running 10 times. It's adding an item to the end of an array. Which array? Test array. What's it adding? A random number between zero and 10. Printing off the original numbers. We have our variable from the last lesson, flag, which is equal to false. We have a loop here that is going to run for the length of the array. If we find a five, it's gonna replace flag with true. At the end, it has a statement in the debug console that says array has a five and the statement is either true or false. What are we doing? We are just creating a function that encompasses everything from variable down to what it looks like our console statement as well. So all this here is going to go into a function. Let's go ahead and do that. Here's a function. This might be easier to do in block form. So we're gonna to switch to block form real quick. We are going to move over a function right here. Remember we have to include the variable there, our loop and our console.log statement. What it's saying right now is you created a function, but you haven't called it. Let's call it. What were you calling? Well, we have to rename these both search and we're going to rename this my function to search as well. Now when search is called, it is going to run the code from our previous exercise. Let's see if that actually happens. Run. No fives, the array has a five and it is false. Let's run it again to make sure we get a five. We have a five and it is true. It looks like our code is running exactly as before. Looking back up here to our do this, we created a new function. Our new function was called search. We moved all our code from the last exercise and that code was just checking for a five and telling our variable whether it was true or false. We then called that function and our code acted as it did before. I think that's all code.org wanted from us on this lesson. Let's see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.